Welcome to the third video in our series on traditional approaches to cost assignment. This video will be our first video looking at the departmental overhead allocation rates. Specifically, this video will focus on the allocation of overheads to the various departments. The videos following this one will then focus on the various methods of reallocating the service departments to the production departments. So what are our learning objectives for this video? First, we need to revise the underlying workings of the departmental overhead rates. Once we have done this, we will begin looking at an example. Specifically, our focus will be on allocating the fixed factory overheads to the various departments in the factory. So let us revise how the departmental overhead rate determination works. Remember, our first step is to determine the total manufacturing overhead cost. After this, we want to identify the separate departments within the factory. Once we have identified the separate departments, we then need to allocate the total overhead cost to each individual department. We then need to reallocate the costs of the service departments to the production departments. There are four main ways of doing this, namely the direct method, the specified order of closing method, the reciprocal method, and the simultaneous equation method. We will have a look at each of these methods in subsequent videos. We then identify a volume-based cost driver for each department. We then calculate the separate overhead rates for each department individually. And finally, we apply these rates to the cost object. Let us now have a look at an example. We are the cost accountant at a local factory. We see that this factory operates two production departments, which are cutting and assembly, and it also has two service departments, being procurement and maintenance. We are in the process of determining the departmental overhead rates, and we have gathered the following information. So here we now have the important information for what we are trying to do. Our first table provides us with our overhead costs for the factory in total. Our second table then provides us with some basic information about each department, which we can use to allocate the overhead costs to the departments. We need to be very careful to select the information which best reflects each department's usage of the overhead costs. We are then provided with the required where we need to value this product. Now in this video, we will limit the extent of our solution to the allocation of overheads to the various departments. We will complete the example in subsequent videos. We can begin to answer the required by drawing up a table showing the various departments and costs which need to be allocated. You will note that I have presented a column for each department and a row for each cost. Very importantly, we are only allocating the fixed factory overheads. Any direct costs will be directly traced to the product and do not need to go through this process of cost allocation. Take a moment now to rewind the video back to the information section and try to allocate the various costs between the different departments on your own. Now let us allocate the costs. Our first cost is machinery depreciation. If we look at the information, which piece of information do you think best explains the depreciation per department? Machinery depreciation would be based on the value of the machinery. Therefore, the machine value would best explain the depreciation per department. We can take the 200,000 Rand depreciation and divided by the 800,000 Rand total machine value, we then arrive at 25 cents of depreciation per Rand of machine value. We then multiply this 25 cents by the machine value in each individual department. This then gives us the depreciation per department. If we add up the depreciation for cutting, assembly, procurement and maintenance, we find that we arrive back at our total of 200,000 Rand. Now we follow the same process for our next cost of rates and rental. If we consider rates and rental, 
they are probably best described by the floor area. As our factory has a bigger floor area, so we would end up paying more rental and rates. Again, we divide the 108,000 Rand by the total floor area of 2,400 meters squared to arrive at a cost of 45 Rand per meter squared. We then multiply this 45 Rand by the floor area of each department individually. We can now add these values into the row on rental and rates under the relevant department. On to our next cost of electricity. If we look at the information provided, electricity would probably be best explained by power usage. So we can divide our cost of 150,000 Rand by the 30,000 kilowatt hours to arrive at a cost of 5 Rand per kilowatt hour. Again, we then need to multiply the 5 Rand per kilowatt hour by each of the individual department's power usage. This provides us with the electricity allocation for each department, which again adds up to the total electricity expense. Our final cost is the supervisor salary. It is important to note at this point that there could be two or more competing methods to allocate a cost to each department. We need to carefully consider each option and always choose the one which best represents the usage of the cost based on our understanding of the cost itself. For example, in our previous cost of electricity, we could have said we should allocate it via machine hours because the machinery would be the item using the electricity. However, this would mean that we feel that the procurement and maintenance department use no electricity, which is unrealistic, as they may be using lights, heating, and other forms of electricity. This is why we rather went with power usage. For the supervisor salary, a similar situation occurs, where we could have more than one option to allocate this cost. Perhaps we could use the number of employees, or perhaps we could use the direct labor hours. In this example, we are not provided with too much information on the costs themselves, so we need to logically determine which information to base our allocation on. If we look at the two options, we see that each department has some employees. However, only the production departments of cutting and assembly have direct labor hours. Now we need to ask if the supervisor will oversee all the employees or if the supervisor will only oversee the employees in the production department and leave the service departments unsupervised. It is unlikely that the service departments will be unsupervised, so it will be best to allocate the supervisor salary based on the number of employees. It is important to remember that this would differ on a case-by-case -case basis. So then, we will divide the 140,000 Rand by the 40 employees to arrive at 3,500 Rand per employee. We then multiply this 3,500 Rand per employee by the number of employees in each department. We can now add in the supervisor salary for each individual department. The last step then is to total each department. Now we have seen the basics of how to allocate the overhead costs to the individual departments, and we are in a position to reallocate the service department overhead costs to the production departments. In our next video, we will use the direct allocation method to allocate our service departments to the production departments. Our video after that will use the specified order of closing method. Then we will look at the repeated distribution or reciprocal method. Finally, in our last video in the series, we will look at the simultaneous equation method. See you next time.